my god, it's San Diego Comic Con! What's up? Collider Heroes 124, we are here getting sweaty. Uh, we're going to be checking out some crazy madness in about two days, two days away from Hall H, two days away from a lot of crazy stuff dropping. Uh, it, it's madness, and I'm joined by Robert Meyer Burnett. Have you seen the hot toys? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You will believe a man can cry. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, check it out. You know what? You also believe that Amy Dallin is here. Yes, hello. <laughs> it's the most wonderful time of the year. It certainly is. Um, we are looking forward to seeing all of you tomorrow. Uh, we're, we're not doing a live Heroes, but we're doing we're taping the show tomorrow, and then we're going to do a quick signing at booth 3917. So please come on down to booth 3917, roughly around noon, 12 o'clock. Uh, at Comic Con, I think it's it's located right next to, um, I think it's Hall K is where my booth is. So just come on by. We're gonna have some flavory uh, heroes posters that we are gonna sign and give away for about 20 minutes. So be there, line up if you have to. Because oh, that's an exclusive. Yeah, literally. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. It is totally exclusive because I'm I'm gonna print them out. We're gonna give them away. We're gonna sign them. And then, you know, you're welcome to buy other stuff at my table. I got some Slayer comics. I got some Def Superman Lives Blu-rays. But the Collider Heroes posters that all three of us are gracing, uh, you know, thanks to Scott Fleming's incredible artwork, you're going to get some of that flavor for free on Friday right around noon. Come on by. Stand in line. Say hi to us. We'll be there for roughly, probably, I can't even push 30 minutes. All of us are super booked. We're doing panels. We're rocking all this crazy madness. It's impossible to slow down here at San Diego Comic-Con. Let's get into some news nuggets. Let's talk about The Punisher. That's right. The Punisher's Netflix series is coming up very quickly. John Bern Bernthal is The Punisher. We loved him in Daredevil. I, I, I don't think anyone's beat that Punisher uh, version that I've seen. It beat both of the movies. I loved it. So let's talk about what our expectations are for the Punisher series. I mean, we keep hearing that maybe the Punisher is going to be showing up in the Defenders. That makes total sense. Robert, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I would just like to see sort of the Punisher unrepentant. Mm. I want to see him kicking some major ass. I want to see him cleaning up the garbage. I want to see, you know, a little Garth Ennis, right? Mm -hmm. I want to see that kind of Punisher. Oh, yeah. Uh, Garth Ennis. Ennis. Garth Ennis. Garth yeah. Ennis. I mean, I want to see, you know, maybe not that extreme, right? You know, maybe not preacher esque Punisher like that, but but Somewhere, I uh, Garth Garth Ennis is pretty violent. Yeah, I, yeah. I do want to see the Punisher doing some stuff, and I, I I don't want it to be like some PTSD Punisher. I want him to kick some major boute, as uh, they say. What about you, Amy? I what mean, are your if, thoughts? If you're requesting a Punisher who is not damaged by his experiences, you are maybe looking at the well, wrong no, character. Well, no, I mean, but, but but I don't want him to. I, 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 yes, he's damaged, but I don't <laughs> want to see him like lamenting with a gun in his mouth in a hotel room. I want him to be out on the streets taken out the garbage i think you're gonna see that though because i thought what they did the greatest job in with the daredevil series especially those first four episodes were was that battle between daredevil and the punisher and how the they're best. they're so closely similar but yet so far apart because it's a line it's a moral code it's ethics it's certainly what matt murdoch stands for is that is everything that the punisher is doing but the punisher is willing to go to those extra levels that someone like daredevil or the character batman will not they are not murderers well the they're series, doing the opposite of what they're doing that's so. seen on the roof yeah you incredible. know that scene on the roof between daredevil and, and the punisher was the to me one of the great superhero scenes can you call them superheroes i guess you can meta humans yeah, yeah. Marvel characters. The big question for me with this series is, is not that I won't enjoy watching John Bernthal be the Punisher because I'm already super on board, but like the basic question of is there anything more interesting you can say with the Punisher than what they've already said in that season? That's and point. that's a challenge for me because I am someone who loves Punisher best when he is like he is illuminating the outlines of other people's moral codes. So right. his, his interactions with Matt Murdock, his sort of dragging Karen on her like dubious emotional journey in right. that season, that, that to me is where Punisher really shines. So finding a way to take him on his own and keep it as compelling as that was, that's a big challenge. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how they handle it, but that that's I'm that to me that's your big fight. I think you're absolutely right, and I think uh, hopefully they're like challenge accepted. I, I would like to see them bring in not only Kingpin because Kingpin played a big part not only in Daredevil but also the manipulation of Frank Castle, and so mm -hmm. like I like that they brought 
not only you know the Punisher into whatever the Defenders is going to be, but he's part of that now. He was fighting ninjas. He's like he was the backup control in Daredevil season two on the on the rooftop. You're like, oh, bam, there he is. So he's got to be. I got to. We we're going to see him in Defenders. I feel that. But I would like to see some of the villains like Hammerhead or Jigsaw. I'd like to see those characters introduced in the Punisher series because I, I see the the network of bad guys spreading especially because the kingpin where he ended up in season two of daredevil you got to have more bad guys you know there was a there was a movie in the i think it came out in 1980 called the exterminator mm -hmm. and it starred robert ginty and it was directed by the master james glickenhouse until he quit hollywood and became a broker on wall street and made hundreds of millions of dollars right. or something but it was basically about a it was he was the punish the punisher had existed before it was kind of a punisher movie without being a, called the punisher right he just wore a biker helmet yeah and it was just <laughs> it was a vietnam vet comes back and his friend was damaged and killed by gang members and he goes on a rampage and it's one of the great exploitation movies of all time i want to see that well i want to see the modern <laughs> version of of james glickenhouse as the exterminator if you haven't seen it go get it it's awesome well, you might see that, or you might see The Punisher. So maybe, <laughs> hopefully, we see a combination of both. You know what we're definitely going to be keeping our eyes open for? It's called Black Lightning. Now, CW has Black Lightning as a series. They put up a trailer a couple days ago. We're going to talk about that. Uh, Cress Williams is playing Black Lightning, and it looks like it's going to be coming out mid-season, about mid-2018. Amy, what are your thoughts on the Black Lightning trailer? So I actually was really intrigued by this trailer. Uh, the, the costume design is a little bit like old school superhero TV. Right. Uh, we m might look for some updates there. But the, the trailer frames this very distinctly as a series from his daughter's perspective. Yep. And I thought that was really interesting because that's not something we're seeing on the other shows. Uh, and there's, if you've watched the trailer, there's some hints of things to come that, that open up some really cool possibilities for this. I still want to know how it ties into the other shows. I still want to know if it is going to or not. You know, all this all these questions we have about the wider universe. Um, but the trailer sold me on a reason to check out this show that's really different from the setup of everything else they've got going on. I agree. A family oh. man, a principal, all that stuff. I was going to say, sorry, uh, I, I agree with what you're saying. And I like that the way they introduce the daughters and also that they uh, they themselves have some of that kind of inherent electrical power ability. I mean, come on, justice runs in the family? That was great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Definitely. No, no, no. <laughs> Mara Brock uh, Akil is one of the pro executive producers on it, and she mentioned how it's like the daughters are going to play a very large part in not just helping the dad along, but also, you know, probably becoming Black Lightning themselves. What do you think, Robert? Well, I think it looks... Uh, this, I'm very excited for this show. I mean, I've always liked the Black Lightning character. I mean, ever since I was a kid. First of all, the, the name was cool. Totally. You know, and I, I, I've always... I did look... His his night. Remember when Nightwing got that new costume? It mm -hmm. vaguely was Black Lightning esque, sure. yeah. and it kind of was the same color scheme. <laughs> I, I've always liked Black Lightning, and I think that this is a really intriguing. In terms of superhero shows, they're doing something like you said, different. I mean, I like the idea that they're showing it from a child's point of view. What does a child think of their father being a superhero, and what does that mean to them? I mean, it's a whole different way to approach the subject matter, which I think is fantastic. It's fresh and new, and yet you still can have the classic portrayal of a character. And I know you're, the, the, the costume you said looks a little, it does look a little TV superhero-ish, but I kind of like how faithful it is. And the idea yeah. that they're sort of building in this idea that Black Lightning was cool like a decade and a half ago, right. and now he's kind of got to come back and deal with it when he tried to do things the right way. He's got to bring Black Lightning back. I like that. I but think yeah. that's... That's cool. I think the, the thing you're noticing is that they're using a kind of a decade and a half old Black Lightning outfit. Right. So it does have yeah. a little bit, it looks like, you know, it could almost be like Tim Burton, Burton's Batman, his friend Black Lightning, because it, it has that kind of like that rubber suit look to it. But I think when Black Lightning comes back, he's going to have that old suit for a little bit. His daughters are going to be like, yo, dude, you need an upgrade. Bam. And then <laughs> jokes on me. They've done the whole thing intentionally so that they can introduce right. this concept of scope and decade. Like, OK, it, fair. Well, I don't think jokes on you. I think it's good observation. Yeah. And I, I'm hoping that they do do that. I think it's a good observation. So again, you know, I say this a lot on the show. I just can't believe we live in a world <laughs> that we're getting a Black Lightning TV series. Well, you, I, it, it yeah. just uh, it just delights me to no end to know that we're that much closer to the Atari Force. That's right, space opera show. We, that we I certainly are. Want. There's a Sword Quest comic, which I was almost I might put the, I might put it on next week's uh, pull list just because I I saw I was like wow Sword Quest <laughs> flip through it. 
it was actually pretty badass, and I picked it up. I picked up zero, the Zero issue and issue one, and I was like, instantly thought of you. I was like, man, Atari Force, the regeneration is on its way. I'm telling you. Uh, it's time for Atari Force to come back in full. I want to write it, by the way. I want to write This is my break into on. comics. Get I want to write Atari Force, and I want Jose Luis Garcia Lopez to draw it. Woo! I think it's very possible. If anything, we can get Jose Garcia Lopez to draw the covers. I think he would Covers, do that. I want the interiors too. I don't son. be so greedy. By Terry Austin. Don't be too greedy. These guys are, you know, they're busy. Um, one one thing I wanted to mention about Black Lightning, though, I'm very happy for Trevor Von Eden, who designed Black Lightning. He's one of the co-creators for Black Lightning. So for him to see one of his characters finally come to light in this way is really exciting. Um, let's move on. X Men Dark Phoenix has got set pictures. That's right. Check out Cyclops. Oh, we don't have those pictures. All right. Well, hey, what's going on, guys? Check out Cyclops on your Google. Somehow type in Cyclops from Dark Phoenix and look at those pictures. They came out a couple days ago. Wanted to talk about Dark Phoenix. Is it going to be set in the 90s? What are your thoughts? Oh, I think it's very 90s. I think Cyclops looks great. The casting is great. I love his hair, his yep. 90s hair. I kind of rock that hair in the 90s. I was very excited about seeing that. But, you know, again, this movie sort of came out of, it got put into production pretty quickly from the time that they announced it. Right. And it sounds to be epic. Like, you know, if we have... I, I need to see what the Shi'ar look like. Right. That's what I'm... We know what the X-Men look like. I want to see the Shi'ar. I want to see ships. I want spaceships. I want to see Lalandra. I wonder who she's bringing with her. I want to know. I want to see it. I don't want it earthbound. I want it to be in space. I want to be on the moon. You know, maybe throwing the little uh, Inhumans on the moon too, maybe right. a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Hey, look, I want to see Inhumans on the moon. I want to see Gladiator from the Shi'ar Empire, I mean, the guy yeah. with the giant mohawk. Oh yes. yeah, I want to see that happen. Very Kirby S, that guy. Yeah, I want to see him fight Colossus. I want to see that because that's that's uh, Claremont and Byrne. That's some original. I want to see that happen. What are your thoughts? Uh, so I'm, I'm keeping my hopes really high. There's a lot of unanswered questions I have about this. Uh, we have, is this, am I right here, a first time director? Yeah, yes. Uh, although Simon Kimmel Long obviously like, yeah. has been attached to these movies for years and years and years yeah. and years. Uh, I, I have no idea what to expect in terms of that. Uh, I hope it's amazing. It has a bunch of my favorite ingredients in it. If it is a 10 year jump, we're gonna have to suspend our disbelief even further, but it's the X-Men, we can do that. Uh, yeah. And, and it had like, I would love for this to answer my highest hopes. I'm just trying to be reasonable. I just can't believe we're getting that and the New Mutants in one year. Yeah, and, and Deadpool, then too. Deadpool too. I think. <laughs> I mean, I think that's the most fantastic news is that is that Fox is like, um, we got an incredible franchise. Why are we not doing anything with all the, like these hundreds of mutant characters? So now we get an X Men TV series, The Gifted. We get an, another so X Men TV that. series, Legion, which is incredible television it's one of the most amazing series that's come out this entire year we get a second season of that and then we get three x-men movies we get a science fiction one we get a horror one and we get a comedy they're all coming out next year so i think it's next year is the year of the x that's what i'd say i mean call back to yesterday resurrection totally yeah. I know you'll never say it out loud i'm never gonna, gonna say trying. that word don't make me try to say it amy <laughs> but the uh, sons, the, oh the god the x no yeah you almost oh, did it almost did it but it, it <laughs> shall not happen shall not pass you know what you know what's going to pass right now uh not what you're thinking um what comic <laughs> book should be an ongoing series that's right we're going to be doing this every single thursday we're going to talk about what comic book should actually get turned into a movie or a television show this week it's the shadow who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men yes it's <laughs> The Shadow Knows. That's right. Started out as a serial on radio, moved into a serialized t a little snidbit comic book. And, uh, and then later in 1994, it starred Alec Baldwin. It was directed by Russell Mulcahy. So we've had pulp uh, noirs done of The Shadow this entire time. The comic book series in the 80s was kind of relaunched by Howard Chaykin, did an amazing four-issue run. Then Andy Helfer and Bill Sienkiewicz, then followed by um, Kyle Kyle Baker his incredible run on The Shadow. We've got a lot of different versions of The Shadow now being published by Dynamite. Robert, what are your thoughts on what version of The Shadow? Should it be a TV series or a movie? What do you think? Well, I think it'd be a great... The problem is if you do it as a period piece, we saw with Agent Carter, it gets expensive. It's hard to do right. period pieces, but The Shadow really is... He belongs into in his era. Like, you could update The Shadow, but I like the idea. There's something cool about going back in time. Like, I'd love to see a 
a Peaky Blinders esque version of the cool. Shadow. I mean, if you haven't seen Peaky Blinders on on Netflix, it's it's awesome. I mean, I love Peaky Blinders. It takes place in, in Birmingham, you know, in the, oh, yeah. in the late teens and twenties, you know, and I, it's so cool. I gotta say, what I like better is Taboo. It's also Tom Hardy's in that too. Well, that's but like, true. My God, Taboo is incredible. Well, t- Tom Hardy would make a great Lamont Cranston. He would, man. Like, just you know? throw him in there. But like, look, dude, you don't even have to say that much. You can mumble through the, you know, the <laughs> shadow knows. <laughs> Who knows? Amy, do you know who the shadow knows would be? Would it be a movie or a TV series? Uh, I think a TV series could be really fun. And I don't know how to solve the problem of it being expensive, but I'd love to see the period piece version. Uh, it's sort of, there's so much resonance with that period. And like, it's not that the world wasn't complicated and sophisticated before that, but like the 30s are a really potent time for right. the like development of the 20th century and new threats and new ways of looking at things and urbanization. Um, and I think it would... It could be really good. Do it. Please do it. You know what? I'm going to go the opposite way of what you guys are saying. Yeah, I want the it. shadow right now. I want him updated. I want Shangri-La. The whole idea of the sh- of the shadow and all those things can still exist now, but look at the culture that we live in now. We live in a world where people are locked down on their cell phones 90% of the day. People are asleep right now. They're not awake. People need to get woken up. Who can wake them up? The shadow can. That's right. It's like he's going to fight crime in a brand new way. That's what I kind of like about it. It's like, you know, the, the 80s did a kind of an update with The Shadow, and they brought his two sons in, and they were flying around in this weird kind of car. That was the 80s. I want to see The Shadow done now. I feel like I'm not going to argue with you guys. If they did do a, a Shadows, a 30s version, a TV show or a movie, I'm first in line to watch it. But I personally would like to see an updated version of The Shadow and see what you can do with that kind of character and then move them into now. So. Would your modern Shadow rock the fedora? Yes. Okay. Most definitely. Well, there you go. He would have to rock the fedora. I don't know what else he'd be rocking, but maybe just only that fedora and a, a Send red your scar. character designs for yeah. Modern Shadow. Yep. The new Shadow designs, Collider Heroes Challenge. Send <laughs> that in for next week. Let's rock on some Twitter questions. Starting off with Vic Ram Sai asks, if Thor and Justice League, Thor Ragnarok and Justice League are both great, will this be the greatest year ever for comic book movies? Yes. <laughs> if, if those two movies are are drop dead fantastic i'm like wow we are we just had some incredible amazing films we had logan we got wonder woman we've got spider-man homecoming then we're gonna have thor ragnarok and justice league and i love guardians of the galaxy too I oh, oh my god I, I almost forgot that it, guardians of the galaxy too i did forget it all of those films are so much fun they're so great i mean look i mean there's other comic book adaptations like valerian coming yeah. up that's based off of, of a european amazing comic book run so we've got a whole bunch of different comic book movies that are coming out big budget ones but a lot of them that are just really kind of knocked it out of the park at least for uh, our expectations yeah. and i thought logan was incredible amy what are your thoughts i think there's a there's a good chance we're gonna we're gonna remember this one i mean i'm already gonna remember this one because wonder woman yep uh but especially if, if those two movies knock it out of the park like we're i mean i still look back with reverence on 2008 because it was like a, wow, that was a big year for didn't know movies could be like this yep. um, with Iron Man and Dark Knight. Oh, yeah. uh, and this would just be a, like, hitting on all cylinders, many different styles of movie. Like, I think there's, if, if those two deliver, that totally. would be Robert. bringing it home. I, I agree. And I think it's actually cool. Like, I think we all really liked Wonder Woman. I love the fact that we're going to see her again in just a few months. Yep. You know, we, we've got, we've got. Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, who everybody loved, who charmed the pants out, out, out of all of us, all of the naysayers and all those people that didn't believe in her, and to have her come back, because I'm sure in the retooling or whatever Joss Whedon has done, that she has been given more to do. Right. I can only imagine that she is, and I, I can't wait to see that. And I think, you know, we live in this time, there's a lot of people that poo-poo, a lot of the critical establishment poo-poos these comic book films, mm-hmm. but to me, they're just another iteration of it. It was Westerns in the 50s, sure. you know, and it was... There was lawyer movies and cop Musicals. movies in the 70s. Musicals. <laughs> it's just another genre of film. And I, yeah. people are like, oh, the superhero movie is just playing out. the. It's taking over the multiplex. But so what? They're yeah. different iterations. Are, if they're fun and they're good movies and people like them, you know, what's wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. That's what, that's what we feel. So, I mean, the people are poo-pooing those things. I don't know who they are, but they should, you know. Go away. We got Ego, <laughs> the living planet. We got a planet with a giant smile on its face. Yeah. Could have been a scowl, but I, you know, I'd like to, it was Ego, the living planet in a movie theater this year. Yeah. These are crazy, wonderful times. That you're even saying that is crazy. That yeah. Ego, the living planet 
in any form whatsoever actually was actually made in some form of like a movie or TV show. And he turned crazy. into Kurt Russell and impregnated a human woman. <laughs> That's right. Imagine. This is crazy times. Yep. This is part of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, <laughs> if you haven't seen it yet. King Joker asks, with the Black Order announcement, could we see Thane or Thanos visiting the Inhumans? Will Black Bolt scream in Thanos' face? Well, King Joker, never is that ever going to happen. Unfortunately, I think that they're going to keep keep them separated is what they're going to give. The Inhumans not only on the moon, but they're also on ABC television. So I think the movie version of Thanos and the Inhumans, even though they're you know, part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe or Marvel Universe. I think they keeping the TV shows quite separate from the movies. What do you think, Amy? It's, I'm, you're probably right. It's a little unfortunate. Like, if they are riffing on Jonathan Hickman's Infinity, Thane was a big part of that. Um, but we've seen them recombine elements successfully before. Expecting a super faithful adaptation would be really out of line with their track record. Uh, so... While it would be really cool if we're going cosmic to have the Inhumans involved, it's probably not reasonable to expect it. Right. Robert? I agree. All we're right. not going to see it. Yep. Then not, you're not going to see it. You know what? Here's another question. The Kevcast asks, whatever happened with the Booster Gold Blue Beetle Buddy Cop movie? I'm a huge Booster Gold fan and was looking forward to it. Well, I think Greg Berlanti uh, decided to do a Booster Gold television series. So we can't 100% rule out that Blue Beetle won't be a part of that. I know that he was talking about he wants to shoot it in like a documentary style. So it'll be like Booster Gold, kind of like done in this uh, almost like, you know, live television way. So it sounds interesting to me. What are your thoughts? Well, Booster Gold does care skeets. So skeets can just shoot all of his, all, all of his uh, shenanigans. I think that's pretty great. What, what, what's wrong with having a uh, really your robot android companion, whatever you want to call it, that also happens to have a camera that can right? constantly keep you on social media live. I mean, imagine an endless Facebook live video of your superheroics. <laughs> then what we get the new Gold warriors and then do. we get the original Civil War. It goes bad places. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's only when bad things happen. That's true. You and know? nothing bad ever happens in superhero no. stories, so it's fine. What do you think? Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. Will Blue Beetle show up in the Booster Gold series? I mean, it'd be a shame if he didn't. I, it's a little weird that he hasn't popped up anywhere else in the DC thing, in the DC TV universe, right. so maybe they're saving him for that. Totally. Well, hopefully they are. Um, Alex Amard asks, will Tom Holland's Spider-Man be allowed to grow beyond high school by Marvel Sony, or will he be replaced to keep the vibe? Hmm. Well, I personally think it'd be a mistake to replace Tom Holland for at least the next 10 years. I'd keep Spider-Man around for Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3, Spider-Man 4, Spider-Man 5, Spider-Man 6, however many Spider-Mans that they're able to make with both Sony and Marvel Cinematic Universe working side by side. We already know they've got, you know, silver and black. They've got Venom. They're like still hell bent on making a Sinister Six movie. They're like talking about making a Scorpion standalone movie. They're not. But, you know, I could see Sony going crazy and be like, relax, man. Get your Spider-Man in there. Like get a Spider-Man movie every two years. Let Peter go through high school. Every two years, we get another another year until he graduates in the fourth film. I think it's a great way to go, having Spider-Man be part of the cinematic universe. I mean, a lot of people are talking about the Spider-Man 2 movie is going to come out right after Avengers Infinity War or whatever, number four, whatever that fourth film is, and that Spider-Man 2 is actually going to launch phase four. I've heard Kevin Feige kind of talk about that. What are your thoughts? Um, oh, yeah, that did remind me. I think he said that like uh, Peter will be a junior in the next one, and mm -hmm. he was a sophomore in this one. So it doesn't seem like they're planning to freeze him in time. Right. And I, they'd be fools to let Tom Holland go. Um, I don't know how long we get to have the Marvel-Sony marriage. Right. Uh, hopefully forever. Right. Um, but I will enjoy it as long as it lasts. Definitely. How about you, Robert? I think it's, why, why would you stop? I mean, there's eight Harry Potter movies. So why can't we have eight Spider-Man movies and see him go through college? Yeah. And, 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 you know, why not do, like, the Social Network Spider-Man movie where he becomes Mark Zuckerberg and he, you know, he has that long conversation with Rooney Mara and, 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 and tells her she's going to Boston University and couldn't get into Harvard and they get in a big fight. I want to see that. I want to see the Social Network Spider-Man movie where he creates something to replace Facebook. Well, he and Harry make something together, and then it super tests the limits of their friendship, and then Harry goes off the deep end, and yeah. I love yeah. that idea. Harry Let's goes off that. the deep end, creates the Hobgoblin, and makes Ned become the Hobgoblin. What if, he meets, Ned. what if he meets Harry in college a little? Like they they kind of did that in the other movies, but I think it make, you know, makes sense. Well, 
all that stuff is fine and good. We're going to have to wait like two more years to find out with Spider-Man 2. But that's not really that bad because of all these other crazy films that Spider-Man is going to be. He's going to be in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers 4 and then Spider-Man 2. So we're going to get a lot of Spider-Man over the next two years. That's it for this episode of 124 Collider Heroes. You've been watching us Thursday, San Diego Comic-Con. Definitely come and visit us tomorrow at around 12 noon, we'll be at booth 3917. Amy, Robert, myself, we're going to be signing some Collider Heroes posters. The artwork done by Scott Fleming, he graciously said, hey, you can use these posters, and I'm giving them away. We're going to sign them. Come on by. We're going to be rocking that for about 30 minutes, and then we're going to disappear like crazy pumpkins. Those um, are exclusives. The, Those are really exclusive. They are super exclusive. I don't even know how many I'm going to make yet. Do they I get just, one? Oh, yeah. Okay, just yeah, I, they're, I, We might be making 50, which means only 47 of you sweaties are going to get them because we're each getting one ourselves. <laughs> so get there. Get in line. Um, get there around 1130. We'll be showing up at 12, but get there. We'll have a little line for it. Um, 3917. Uh, it's, I think it's near Hall, Hall K, I believe. But, uh, you know, it's a booth. Come on by. Say hi. Once again, check out Comic Book Shopping. That's online. Jacob Batalon's episode just came on on Wednesday. Uh, check it out. And we're going to enjoy the rest of San Diego Comic-Con. Thanks again for watching the show. Robert, where can people find you? Well, I'll tell you where they can't find me yet, and that's on the IMDb yacht. I'm trying to get on the IMDb yacht, so help me out, brothers and sisters. Uh, but you can find me on Twitter at BurnettRM, which is where you should tweet me that how I can get on the uh, IMDb yacht, or find me on Instagram at RBurnett, or on Robert Meyer Burnett, or at Robert Meyer Burnett, whatever, Facebook, you know. He's got, you've got like 40 different uh, at Robert Meyer Burnett. That's, that's why those Russian, bot, those Russian bots are coming at you because of that. I just didn't anticipate the social media world. Hey, it's Facebook told me I just celebrated my 10-year Facebook anniversary that was longer than my marriage. <laughs> Amy, where can people find you online? You can find me at Enthusiamy, or say hi if you see me down at San Diego. Awesome. Well, hey, you can find me just on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnapp, or come to booth 3917. I'm going to be sweating it out all day today and all day tomorrow. You could Saturday, Sunday, we're here at San Diego Comic-Con, so definitely say hi to any one of us if you see us, and we'll see you again tomorrow. We're doing a special, uh, not live, but it's a, we're filming it at San Diego Comic-Con. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.